Philip Lowe, uh, governor of the RBA, released his uh, statement following the RBA meeting. And uh, it was a very unusual uh, document because usually he just talks about interest rates, but, uh, and he did talk about interest rates in the statement, uh, but also he provided uh, a really significant uh, preview of the quarterly statement on monetary policy, uh, which is uh, out on Friday this week. And what that statement of monetary policy is, is all about the outlook for the economy. So what I'll do this morning is I'll talk firstly about interest rates, what happened with interest rates and where they anticipate they're going. And then I'll talk about uh, Philip Lowe's discussion of the economy in this, in this uh, statement released yesterday. So what happened yesterday uh, was that uh, in line with our forecast a month ago, uh, rates went up by 50 basis points and they went up to uh, 185 basis points. Now, uh, I confidently forecast um, that right that in a month's time, when the RBA meets again, it will put up rates by another 50 basis points uh, to 235 basis points. Uh, and in doing so, it will be it will be uh, just taking a step on the path to uh, the November meeting when the rates will rise by three to 335 basis points, both uh, following, a, following a Fed meeting in the first week of November and the RBA meeting in the first week of November. Rates in both countries will be exactly the same. Um, now, what's interesting about, well, there's a number of interesting things about the outlook for the economy that uh, Philip uh, Lowe talked about yesterday. One was he increased the, his inflationary expectation for this uh, year, for headline inflation, by a full percent. He had previously said, uh, only about four weeks ago, that um, he thought that uh, headline inflation would peak this year at just below 7%. He's now said uh, yesterday that he anticipates that uh, headline inflation will reach 7 and 3 quarter percent by the end of this year. Uh, now, that's not core inflation. Core inflation, he doesn't provide a forecast here, but there will be a forecast on Friday uh, put out in the, uh, uh, in the quarterly statement of the RBA. But he says inflation at the, the end of this year will be seven and three quarter percent, but it will then fall uh, over the next year to a headline inflation number of four percent next year in three percent uh, the year after. So he thinks the RBA uh, doing what it's doing has beaten the problem and will uh, will break inflation. But to do it, he thinks the RBA has to slow the Australian economy. So he thinks that. Uh, the Australian economy this year will grow at three and a quarter percent. Now that's really great. That's way better than anything that's happening in Europe, and it's way better than anything that's happening in the United States. Uh, but it's a full percent lower than where he was at the beginning of the year when he thought that um, the Australian economy would grow better than four percent. After growing by three and a quarter percent for this year, he thinks that growth will fall pretty sharply to uh, 1.75% next year and 1.75% the year after. And that's very similar to what we saw the Fed forecast in its uh, summary of economic projections at the June meeting. Uh, we won't know what the Fed currently thinks until its September meeting, uh, which is uh, uh, many weeks away, many weeks away. Um, so, uh, so what he's showing is falling inflation, but at the cost of a deceleration in the economy from three and a quarter percent this year to one and three quarter percent next year, and one and three quarter percent the year after that. Now, if I add up those numbers for inflation and, um, and output growth, that means nominal growth is 11 percent this year, but falls almost in half uh, to five and three quarter percent the year after that. And four and three quarter percent the year after that. So, uh, and that's really important because it's that uh, it's, uh, increase in money growth that uh, drives things like profits and, and uh, 
and retail sales. So what that suggests is the economy will slow down uh, to growth at a slower rate, but it, but obviously uh, there's uh, there's no recession on, on the uh, on the prospect. Um, so um, uh, one of the interesting things that he says in terms of an area of risk that the RBA is worried about uh, is on the is in the second last paragraph of the statement where he says a key source of uncertainty continues to be the behaviour of household spending. Uh, but in this, he, when he talks about this, he gets into territory um, that Michelle Bullock uh, got into a couple of weeks ago when she presented for us about what happens in response to rising interest rates and what happens to consumer behaviour. And uh, you get to the same kind of place with this uh, that Michelle Bullock got a, a couple of weeks ago in that what's happening is in one of the areas of concern is the rising interest rates are going to mean that house prices going down. Now, what that does normally with the consumer is it puts downward pressure on wealth effect because the consumer feels less wealthy, the consumer believes they have less money to spend, and they, re and they reduce retail spending. But the point that, uh, that Michelle Bullock made, and was made again very interestingly this morning uh, by the CEO of ANZ, is that um, houses are falling from a much higher value than they were a couple of years ago. So even though those house prices will fall as interest rates go up, the consumer is individually still significantly wealthy than they were uh, last year or the year before. And it's that which will hold up uh, domestic demand in the economy. So uh, the RBA says uh, it will continue the path of increases in interest rates and normalise the economy, uh, and, uh, um, but it's not on a predetermined path. However, we determine uh, that rates will continue to rise until uh, they get the 3.35% um, uh, in November. Where do we think it's going after that? Our model of short rates, which started uh, about four months ago and what people then thought was an outrageously high level of 3.7%, has now actually declined very slightly to a level of 3.6%. Uh, and maybe that's because uh, the market, like the RBA, sees inflation falling next year and the year after. Maybe. But uh, we've, after we get to where we are in November, 335 basis points, we've got a bit higher to go, uh, but we've obviously, we think we'll have done uh, the overwhelming majority of the rate hikes we're going to see in the next year.